Let's discuss some of the principles underlying press calibration. First, we have the empty paper. Then we start putting some maximum amount of color onto it. Maximum cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. Then we start assigning names to the quantities. There's none at the top, all we can get at the bottom, halfway is somewhere in between. Now the numbers. Inside the printing press itself, the number scale is 0 to 256. So all of it is 255, half 127. They can also be normalized to 0, 100, and 50 percent. Then we look closely at the maximum amounts, and those are measured on a logarithmic scale of reflectance, and they are called Dmax. There you see a different set of numbers, like 1.4, 0.9, 1.6. Now we realize that 100% equals 255 equals 1.4 on the cyan, 0.9 on the yellow, 1.6 on the black. Now through the half-toning process, we subdivide that maximum amount into lighter and lighter values. When all four of those maximum amounts are stacked up, they equal 400%, which is too much to print, so we have to reduce it. That's called total area coverage, or TAC. Now let's focus in on the details of that tone reproduction or the half toning or lightening up of that maximum amount of colorant. Inside the image press system, that's referred to as gradation adjustment. So let's construct a table and let's start to put some fictitious numbers into the table to see how this sort of a density control system works. We have color patches that we print, we have a target that we hope for, we measure the patches and we make a correction. Let's look at the patches. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. These are the scales that we print when we launch the press calibration. The target is what you hope to measure, and if you don't want any changes in the values, that's called linear, and you can see 10, 20, 30 in white. The actual measurements, you can see that they travel. They sometimes change. 5, 17, 25, 38, 50. So therefore, the correction in green would be add 5, add 3, add 5, add 2, no change, and take away 5. So that's the table of what we wanted, and what we got, and the corrections that you have to produce. That table can be presented graphically, as you see here. So let's construct a graph. These graphs are called input-output curves. They have many different names. We'll look at some of the details. Along the bottom, the input values. Up the side, the output values. Zero is in the lower left, 100% in the corners. When you get a value input that equals the value output, that's called linear response. Input equals output. And when you get that, the curve is actually 45 degrees, not a curve at all. Now let's start to plot the measurements in this example in red. 5, 17, 25. You see the shape is below the desired curve, the desired linear response. Now we start to plot in green the correction values, plus 5, plus 3, plus 5, plus 2, 0, minus 5. Now you can see the shape of the correction curve. So tone reproduction gets tracked and controlled in two ways, tone reproduction tables and tone reproduction curves. The press calibration is a density control system that works along the principles that you see here. Thanks for joining us. See you next time.